This is the Evolution Fury 5 table saw. It comes in a large box like that. When you get it, you do need to assemble it. This video is going to show you how to do the assembly. Before you start to assemble the saw, it is a good idea to empty everything out and check that you know what every component is before you start. And then on the bench, I've laid out all the nuts and bolts. The saw actually comes with two spanners. We're only going to be using one spanner. I'm actually going to use the ratchet to speed things up a bit. I've now got all the components laid out here for making the legs. We're going to start off by taking a leg. At the bottom of each leg, we have a rubber foot that needs pushing into position. Like so. We're now going to select two legs, a long green piece, and the long black piece for the top. So here we have the leg with the rubber foot at the bottom. We're now going to take one of the long black pieces and we're going to place that on the inside of the leg like so. And then we're going to place a six millimeter hex bolt into the hole. And then on the other side, we're going to put the washer and then the nut. We're not going to tighten it up fully, we're just going to tighten it up loosely for now. We now need to get the other leg and do exactly the same with that. Again, I'm only going to do this finger tight. I'm now going to fit the long cross piece. That goes in that way up. It's easy to get this the correct way. The thick side should be facing upwards. And that goes just in the centre there. We're now going to take the two sets of legs and make this into a table using the smaller cross pieces. So again we push the bolt in, then we're going to put the washer on and the nut and then tighten up the nut finger tight. And then I'm going to get the other leg. can now do the same with the second short piece. Again, we need to locate that. Finally, we can pull this round. Insert bolt. And then put the washer and the nut on the inside. We can now get the shorter green pieces. Again, these go with the thicker parts facing upwards and we can place them on the inside. We're now going to choose the narrow side. I'm going to put the cantilever braces on there. These will give the machine more stability at the back. We're now going to take the bolts that hold the actual saw down to the table legs and we're going to push each one of those in position. This is only temporarily, just to ensure that we can get the bolts in. Now that we've done that, we're going to go around and tighten all the nuts. Then I'm going to pick the saw up and I'm going to place it on the legs. Obviously the back of the machine is where these braces are at the bottom so I have actually put the table on there the correct way so that is facing the back of the machine. We can now bolt this down. It's the two longer bolts for the back and the two shorter bolts for the front. We can now take a nut and the washer and bolt the saw down.
We're now going to fit the table extensions, which is these components. These are not left or right handed, so you can use either. The important thing is making sure that the single all is at the front. This time we're going to use the X-head bolts. I'm going to put a washer on the bolt side as well as on the nut side. So we're going to take one of the extensions and we're going to use the first all. We're going to place that in there. Then we're going to put a washer and the nut on the inside. They're going to fit the other support. Again, we're using a washer on the bolt. We're going to push that through, put a washer on the inside and then a nut. We're then going to get that to the centre of the slot and we are going to tighten that up using the spanner. We now need the cap head screws, which look like that. They are an Allen key fitting. The Allen key is supplied. Again, before we put this on, we're just going to check that we've got the awl at the front of the machine. And then we're going to put that on there. And we're going to use the two cap head screws to bolt through into the machine there and there. Before we tighten up the socket head screws underneath here, we're just going to check that we've got everything square. So I'm just going to use a straight edge. In this case, I'm using a spirit level. And we can see that we've got that piece and that piece exactly in a line with the table. We can now put the spirit level on that way and we can just use it as a straight edge. And we can just use that before we actually tighten up the screws underneath. We're now going to use the four style tapping screws to fix these braces to the turrets. Before we do this we need to get a straight edge to go all the way across there. And then we need to ensure that the table is perfectly straight before we fix the turret brace to the machine. So we're just going to push that up until it's perfectly straight. And then I'm going to push the screw in there and we're going to drive that in using a drill. The aluminium face plate slides on to the steel carrier. You can see that we've got coach head bolts there. That simply slides into that channel. So once you get the bolts aligned, that will simply slide in there. You may just need to turn them a bit. Once that's in, you can slide it all the way up there. You can then turn it around that way and lock that in position using the two plastic screws. The fence rail comes in two pieces, that needs joining together using that metal bar. If you look on the inside of there you will see a piece of foam which enables the metal bar to grip. So we need to push this equally into both pieces. So we're going to push it into the first piece until we get it approximately halfway. And then we're going to take the second one and then we're going to do the same with that and we're going to push that in. So the bar is now halfway into each piece. We're now going to take the door med coach head bolts and we're going to slide those into the track. And you can see that these bolts actually go through those holes. So we're just going to align each of the bolts with each of the holes. And I'm just going to pick that up and flip it over and we're going to push each of the bolts into the holes. We can then put the nuts on the back of the bolts.
I'm now going to lift the blade up, which is done by turning this arm wheel. Once that's up fully, we need to check that the blade is square. So I'm going to use an engineer square, put that on the table, and we can see that the blade is not quite square there. So we now need to adjust that. So we need to undo this locking lever, and then we turn the outer part of this wheel, and that will adjust the blade. And you can now see that that is perfectly square with the engineer's square, so we now need to lock that back up again. Now that the scale is on zero there, and that is touching the blade, we now know that is in the correct position, so we can now tighten up the nuts underneath. We're now going to check that the rip fence is parallel to the blade. To do that, we're going to use a straight edge, so we're going to use this aluminium rule and we're going to place that up against the blade so that it's touching it. But then I'm going to release this lever and we're going to slide the rip fence in. And then we're going to lock it in position. You can see that this rip fence is parallel with the blade. If your rip fence is not parallel with the blade, you can adjust it using the two X head screws that are located just there. We're now going to fix the blade guide. That has got a slot in the back there and we have a wing nut to tighten it up. That simply fits onto the driving knife. Slides back and then we simply tighten that up. We don't want to go too tight with that. You need to ensure that the guide can lift and fall back down safely once the material has passed underneath it.